basically our target market is road students mostly but the entire Grahamstown community it's hard to get a quarter here guys like I, I don't know if you guys had a quarter here like quarter from spa, yes like it's just not, it's just not as nice yeah, you know, so we original. thought we we're gonna make this premium quarter and then we first marketed it on um ucar page and like that blew up and everyone was like yo 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 this what did they call our quarter private yeah school. it's like we went to private school and stuff. so um Initially, what we wanted to do, we wanted to make Spike Wars Fridays an event, a pop-up event that happens every Friday. So that's the concept. And um, like the gents have been saying, we want to make it premium because of the perception that we're trying to change that um, black um, cuisine can't be gourmet or premium. You know what I mean? So that's the kind of aspect, the freshness that we're bringing to the table in terms of on a, on a conceptual level. The concept of Spike Wars Fridays is owned by our company called Militia The Firm. Um, so we've done a couple of events, a couple of gigs prior to this in an effort to raise capital. Um, so the money is coming out of our pockets. The money is coming out of our pockets and um, we invested it and we've been turning the money over to the point where now we can afford to get into this business. We, we're still um, students at the end of the day, you know, um, but it's, yes, it's tough for us to like meet the demand, like when people are phoning us and they want caught us, you know. And then we'd have to tell them, no, not this week, next week, you know. Um, it's not something that we want to do, obviously, as entrepreneurs. But um, that's our biggest challenge. around town there isn't a place where they actually sell us food so we actually then uh, wanted also to target the working class within town we started firstly by like selling maguinye in the cave then we realized that you know what selling maguinye is actually not enough why don't we then try to bring the whole of kasi from quarters from tribe to pub to steamed bread just for any typical African person working this so they can be able to afford. We've been trying to look for like a proper quarter since I got to Grahamstown and being from like an area that's highly populated with the meals, I thought it's very, very essential. We don't really find these, place, these kind of foods anywhere else. We, the kitchen is here, so the, the, the food is cooked here. Everything is done here. When we made the whole menu, we actually considered the student budget. So, because then you know a full quarter, for 50, like if you just get a standard quota and then you have a quota for 15 rand, that's more than filling. Here in Eastern Cape, as you know, Eastern Cape, I'm sure quotas are gonna come here like 2025. So, like, yeah, it's a good thing. Eh? We were just actually told that we, sh we are not allowed to sell at the cave anymore um, because we're selling there every day. So apparently that um, if Rhodes has signed a lease with someone who's selling at the cave, you are not allowed to go make business there. I think the way which they explain it, it seems as if the way I understood it was that you are not allowed to go sell every day. But then if it's just on occasions, then you, they do allow you to go sell. Rhodes always tries to portray this image of um, trying to be like inclusive and diverse and stuff. So when, when you tell students not to sell food, um, I think it kind of goes against what the university stands for. Um, and I think it's important that it kind of relooks the dimensions in which it, it, it kind of like enforces diversity and inclusivity around. Like you can't get every single type of traditional food from the DA. So like the more avenues to get it, the better. Now, somebody wants to sell like their African traditional food, then all of a sudden it's a problem. I feel like they should have rather been like, guys, can we create some type of avenue for you to do this? Or like, do you want to? Instead of just being like, bye. I've been saving 
for a very long time. I actually, for me selling things, it, it, it just didn't start here. I started from high school. I used to sell sweets to scoppers, pin pops, all this kind of stuff. And then that's where I started actually saving money. Yeah. One thing that I know is that I'm not living grandson without my degree. <laughs> That's just one thing that I know for a fact. So despite anything else, my first priority is definitely going to be my, my getting my PhD.